Woo! Back in the saddle. Oh, hey, Instagram is me. T from the Patterson Second Strength to Tibet. Yes, I've been moving around. I'm back in the Lachote house, and uh, it's a Saturday. Saturday's one of those days where I, uh, you know, yesterday I did a, in fact, interesting, yesterday I did a, a week wrap where I was talking about, I was talking about something, whatever I was talking about, later on I saw this uh, video of Jeffrey Sachs, and uh, he was saying the same thing I was saying. He gave a little history of that, 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 same thing I was saying. So let's delve more into, you know, the history of what's going on on the, on, on the world stage, right? And, oh, in fact, let me just say this. I told somebody, somebody asked me about that, I forgot who it was, and I was explaining to them, maybe it was Sheppard, maybe it was, uh, maybe it was Antonio. I don't know, it was somewhere between <laughs> Cape Town and uh, uh, Malacana, I, uh, you know, I, 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 they, they said, well, you know, how do I, how do I have this insight with her? I don't have any particular insight. I used to read a lot, you know, so, and then all the stuff that's happening, I sort of live through this stuff. I see, I witness all this stuff, right? And one of the things happened when I first got to Alice, I was at this place and they had TVs. I don't really do TV, but uh, I started watching, this is like 2013, 14. And I started watching TV. Then I started listening to Max Kaiser's on TV because Max, <laughs> he was on RTV. <coughs> um, and he was, but he's broadcasting out of, out of, out of uh, London. Anyway, I was, um, I, 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 I was attracted to him because the boy crazy, right? He's what I call, uh, he's like he's an absurdist, like like me. We think that things are absurd, and it drives you nuts, right? So you, when you explain this stuff, you don't really want people to listen to you. Right? I, I can't explain this to you, but I'm trying. Uh, so anyway, so I, so the first he, it was a half hour program, and the first half he go off into all kinds of news thing, he do all kinds of whacked out thing, and the second fifteen minutes was the second part of the half hour, he would have a guest on, right? But he would calm down a little for the guest, right? But I was attracted to his absurd stuff. It's like a, it's like a, I want to put it like this, but he's like a modern, no, he's not like that. He's like Mark Twain. If Mark Twain was alive, I think he'd be more like, you know, well, I don't know. Let me not compare. Anyway, one of the people, he had a lot of people like like Michael Hudson, a, a bunch of people. One of the people was, was Jeffrey Sachs, you know? And so, 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 so now Jeffrey, no, no, they're, they're going on because Max is, you know, Max is whacked out. He's down in El Salvador now being a, I don't know, being a real whacked out cat, you know? Uh, you know, trying to, cause ferment revolution, I guess, you know. Anyway, so I was trying to explain that this stuff is out here. It's just that we get snowball, you know, um, and, and, you know, and people keep on reacting to the wrong things, you know. And because you react to the wrong things, you get um, in this vortex, in this, I don't call it a vortex, you get into this, in, in, in this backwash that they, see, because if you react to what they say, you're still in their, in their backwash, you see. Anyway, let me leave that alone. My concern this Saturday for my tea tirade has to do with arms. Well, you know, when, when they say stuff like wars happen, uh, the, the arms industry, you know, the, the military industry, well, the arms industry they, they keeps on making a lot of weapons, a lot of bullets, a lot of bombs, you know. And let's think, like, if you have a bomb, for instance, you make a bomb. First, you got to test the bomb, right? So the bomb, say the bomb costs, I'm just going to pick a figure, a uh, million dollars, right? So you so you gotta test it a few times. So you you blown up millions of dollars. Then then when you have a war, you can really test it in real in real time. And so you keep on blowing up all these. Dee, 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 dee. Then you run out of ammunition, and you didn't see it's it's, it's it's crazy, right? And more importantly, they keep on making small arms. Then that and then, and then they they it ends up they end up you say well you know somebody lost and all of a sudden the so called insurgents or the whoever or the or the force other forces get all of a sudden there's a lot of there's a lot of rifles and guns. That, that appear because there's a war here, a war there, insurrection there that, that we need, and so the, these arms keep on being made. So the the, the people on Wall Street that you know, that fund this, that that get uh, I could, that get stuff from this stuff, they get whatever they get. But here's my concern. That well, I'm concerned with the arms. Well, there's war going on. There was a thing. Now follow me on this. In fact, let me do my own personal thing. Right? This is going to be a little long, maybe. I grew up. And at nine years old, I joined the Cadet Corps, the Cadet, New York City Mission Society Cadet Corps. You know, it's like a paramilitary organization. You know, you get disciplined. You know, you can't even compare it to the Boy Scouts because you know you're marching. You got, yeah, you know, you march with the rifle, do rifle spinning like the Persian rifles. You know what I mean? You do um, what do you call that? Saber spinning, you know, like that. There's a drum and bugle call. There's a brave drum and bugle. There's a warrior's drum and bugle call. There's a choir. All kinds of things. We had summer camp. We had winter camp. We had all kinds of. We're, we're back in the. Their location in Dabaza. We're going to hit 
children because that's what we have on Block 16. Anyway, uh, so 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 we're basically a paramilitary organization. Now, can you imagine, like you know, 19 say 1964, 1965, as the upheavals was happening, you got cadet corps units and people carrying sabers. <laughs> <laughs> they're being disciplined. They like got some some discipline, whatever have you. And and then the say the Panthers hit in sixty six, sixty seven, somewhere like that. When I had a unit, I had a unit I was training, and I got um, in the Kilco, you you just I, I, when I was nine years old, I joined the Kilco. Then as you advance in the, as you advance in age and in the ranks or whatever have you, you're 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 charged with training people behind you. You know, so they go through the same thing. You know, so it's, basically, it's a mentorship program by the pen mentor. It's a brilliant kind of thing, right? So one time they gave me a unit. This was like the the the, the, the nine year olds. They were like eight, nine, nine year olds, right? And when they put all the bad, the bad, they put all the let's call it the the troublemakers. They, they call it troublemakers put all the exceptional <laughs> together. And then they said, in my mind, they said, well, who's going to you know who's going to get to to you know to lead these young rascals, huh? So and everybody looked around because everybody knew me. They knew I was out. Crazy, you know. He said, "Slow." So I ended up having this unit, and it was amazing because I had them singing revolutionary songs, you know, like that. At the end, they built their fists, stuff like that. Now, if you can imagine, you the FBI or something like that, and you up there, and you see, uh, you, you see films of uh, night. What you you see films of say the Black Panther uh, breakfast program? They being fed, and they, and and as they're being fed, you know, they 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 they're doing slogans or whatever. It's, it's, scares the beat Jesus out of uh, people like A.J. Hoover and, and, and the powers that be. So they want to get rid of that. The Panthers, they want to get rid of the paramilitary people, all the rest of that stuff. Anything with discipline with black people, because they say they're going to rise up, you know. The gangs, the gangs they, they sort of was dealing with by that time because the, the, the drugs started taking hold. So the gangs were dissipating, but there was still this group, a, a large group of us that wasn't in, that didn't get swept up by the drugs and all the rest of that stuff. This is before crack. This is still, still heroin and stuff like that. So, but what happens is, oh, then, then the draft comes along, you know, in 1967, 66, 67, you had to, they started to constrict people, right? And so, you know, we had, I had a choice, you know, either go and fight some 19-year-old in, in or some 13-year-old some in, in the jungles of Vietnam, or like, say, join the Air Force with their missions to keep them flying. So I joined the Air Force, right? I just wanted to do time and leave, right? But you have to understand, when I joined the Air Force, as far as just, well, that doesn't matter about that. But the thing is, I'm thoroughly trained as a military person. I know the structure. I, I, I'm physically fit, you know. I just, I, 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 my fraternity was, was very difficult at the time. We had to be mentally and physically fit because of a bunch of things, right? So for me to go into the Air Force, any military would be like, ah, oh, Marines, no, it didn't matter. You know what I mean? I could... Even though I was like a hundred and twenty pounds, you know, I am still I'm a let me put it this way, I'm a I was tough. I mean really tough. There's an inner whatever in me at that time. Okay. I'm let me skip ahead. So when I got in the Air Force, for some strange reason, I don't know. I don't know, because I like a challenge, right? So as you're going through as as you go, you, there's all kinds of programs and and there's a thing called pararescue. I said, Oh, let me go out for pararescue. I thought it was nice. Why was it nice? Because pararescue it's like they're, 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 it's like their elite unit. But what pararescue does, you know, like SEALs, or, or SEALs is Navy, right? Or Navy, Marines, whatever it is. They do when they, the Green Beret, the Green Berets as Army, they do, they, they, they go in there and do whatever they do. Pararescue, what, what, I should say we, but I shouldn't say we because I'll tell you what happened. What pararescue does, they have all those skills plus their medics, plus they go in to extract people. They're not, they're, their mission is not to go and, and engage. You engage if you're if if, if, if where you going has got to be engaging. But their mission is actually to get people out. And, and Paris is like, uh, like 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 say a fire is happening, a, a, a big uh, what do you call it? forest fire. They're the ones who go in there and get and get people out. You know. So out of all those things, they they glorify all those people. Say the toughest ones, the baddest ones. Uh, interest, interestingly enough, even though say the Marines is whatever, they tough. Da 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 da. The toughest one, and they say the Air Force is soft. But the problem, but the thing is, with the Air Force people that go into pararescue, they're the hardest of all the special units, the special forces. I'm telling you, don't believe me. Just do your own research. I'm telling you. So I went out for pararescue. Well, I didn't make it. Well, I, I, everything was fine. It's well, the swimming was a little question. But what happened? Is, <laughs> I should have known this. Anyway, I didn't have 20/20 vision. 
And so they don't take you, you know what I mean? So I couldn't do pararescue. Instead, I, you know, went to regular, I became, I became a medic. But the point is, so what I'm trying to say is, what I know a few, not a few years ago, but a, a while ago, what they were, what, what the, like say the, the, the people that, the, the, say the, I guess you'll call them the, the, the white supremacy people, the people that, the, 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 the white boys in the South, or whatever, that wanted, they, they, they the, you know, the, the, the people that wear the tattoos, the Nazi things or whatever have you, what they would do, they would purposely send their young, young people into the military, to the, to the SEALs or whatever have you, to be trained. Now, if you get through that and you get out the service, you're fully military trained. You see, this thing with this boy, with the black rock guy, that the, the the his 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 sister ran the education thing for a while. He runs around here, has some sort of elite unit. They, they you know, they they that that they they they're, they're like a, what do you call that? Um, you hire them and they they're your bodyguards and they haven't lost a, a client yet or whatever it is, whatever. It is. They're like they, they he recruits them from those kind of people. You see. So what happens is you, uh, uh, the, 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 the people, let me put it this way, the military, like the, the, the Green Beret, the SEALs, the whatever is out there, that's their mercenaries. But they're mercenaries on the cheap, you know what I mean? When you get out, you can be a lot of money to be a mercenary. See, in other words, the, 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 Army, the Air Force or whatever, the, well, I shouldn't say the Air Force because it's a little different, but say the, the SEALs or whatever, they're nothing but, but poor, poorly paid mercenaries. But you're thoroughly trained. I want you to think about that. Then when you get out, and you know you you now now you're 29, whatever, 30 years old, and you know you you're out of this. You don't want to really go do the fight some some corporation's war. Rather, it might be paid by the corporation itself. So you get hired by these the princey guy, Eric Eric Prince, that's his name. You know you get hired by his company, right? And then they get government contracts. And so what happens is now the government's paying these these people that most, most of them are trained by by military trained, but now they have additional training and they're focused on whatever their whatever the Prince guy says, right? Now let me just and they, they become contractors. Let me just say this one time. I was traveling. I was going. I was in Thailand, and I was walking past, and there was this brother. Right? He, He's been all boys. He had some women and whatever. He said, "Hey, brother, no, no. I came over to him. I said, and I, "I said, what do you do?" He says, oh, "I got a contract. This was Iraq too, during the Iraq time." He said, "I'm a contractor in Iraq, man, making a lot of money." Blah 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 blah. So those kind of characters, you know, you could really make a lot of bread by being a real mercenary, and and then all these arms are going, and then you're funded by uh, by uh, 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 these radical organizations or governments. You know, uh, like the, the I, I, I have a thing against the UAE now, because I know they're fermenting a lot of stuff. So the, you, all those governments, you know, they, they get their little thing, like France sending their people in to destabilize the Sahel. All that stuff is all in there, it's all around, right? But they're all trained from the same source, right? It's, it's a focused training. You're trying to uh, destabilize, what? Destabilize the world for profit, I guess, you know? Like that. So anyway, so what we face today is highly trained people uh, from, say, from whatever whatever military you, you come from, or whatever whatever paramilitary organization you come from, and you get you get to be you get to be paid a lot of money to be a highly paid missionary instead of being a, being a, a troop and, and getting and being fodder for someplace. Okay, I know it's sort of meandering for you, but I just want to explain to you, but about special forces, what you're up against, not up against, you're not up against anything, because you can just, I won't say ignore them, but just be aware that these people out here trying to hold on to minerals, trying to, how do you say it, trying to, um, trying to ferment stuff so that, uh, like we're in Africa right now, so that Africa will never be able to take their minerals to the market like that. Instead, you know, they have to go through whoever, you see? Okay, I know it's a little Miranda, but it's a tea tirade, man. What can I tell you? It's a Saturday tea tirade. Tomorrow I'll be, I'll be, I'll be different. Okay, okay. Talk to you later. Bye. See you.